because we're about, you know, a third of the way through season, quarter of the way through season, however you want to look at it, let's talk about some stuff that we've learned. Mm. What we learned in 2022. Here's something that I, we each have our, our point. So this is mine. I don't believe, JB, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I don't believe that Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers at this point in their life and career care about winning football. I think that they they would it would be nice if they won. And I think that they want they want to play. But the reality is, I don't think either of those gentlemen at this point in their careers are particularly engaged with the team and what it takes to actually do what they need to do and know what they need to do to actually make a run at a title. So that's what I feel like I've learned in 2022. But what, what are your thoughts on Brady so, and Rodgers so far this season? So one, yes, the other one, no. And I'm going to say yes to okay. to, to uh, Aaron Rodgers being in disengaged. Uh, oh, I thought you were going to say Brady. No, okay. sir, not at all. Uh, so now and I'll give you my philosophy in a second. Uh, Aaron Rodgers disengaged, right? You can tell by the way he's playing ball. Uh, he's not really feeling these young cats, you know what I'm saying? He's basically like a little brat walking around stomping his feet because he don't have nobody to throw the ball to, right? And then he'll drop the ball when he throws it to him, so on and so forth. So it's not that he don't care about winning, but the play of the people around him is making him not care about winning. He's like, ah, oh, fuck it. They ain't trying to win. I ain't trying to win either, right? Tom Brady got a lot going on, right? Tom Brady about to lose his wife, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a divorce going on right now. This man's trying to play a football season. It's not that he don't care about winning. It's just that he can't really focus on it like he wants to. This hey, is Tom Antonio Brady. Antonio Brown's the, in his pool yeah, house. Yeah, the exactly. Going on. You know what I'm saying? This is the constant. He's sending videos of him fucking smacking his wife's ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the consummate pro here we're talking about. The ultimate competitor, Tom fucking Brady, right? But that's why I think his mind is out, though. That's what I'm saying. I no, feel like it's he, not, it's not that he don't. it's not that he don't care about winning. It's just that right now he can't focus enough to get it done and i mind you they've been playing some weird ball right they've been playing some kind of weird ball you know what i'm saying but like you know things ain't been coming together for them. but again benny it's week six it's week fucking six bro right we talking about a lot of different things here right but it's week six so tom brady a lot on his mind aaron Rodgers, he's kind of like you know, i'm gonna take my ball and go home right now you know what i'm saying because he ain't really feeling these young cats man uh, playoffs, you're talking playoffs. about playoffs, right? Playoffs? What, you kidding, you kidding me? We talking playoffs? Listen, it's rough out here, man. You know what I'm saying? All right, well, we'll move on to what you've learned, Dr. Bridges, and that is coach makes the culture, culture don't make the coach. Who are some of these coaches that have come in and you feel like have really established themselves? I think Nick Sirianni is certainly one of them. And who Sirianni? do you think are some of these coaches that have not established the appropriate culture now We're winning going you, forward. You're gonna have to help me with these names. Okay, Sirianni in Philly, check. Correct. Um, the cat in New York, check. Salah. Right? Robert Sala. No, no, the other the other. Dayball. 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 Brian Dayball. Check. Yep. Sala, check, right? The cat in Minnesota, check. Yep. Right? Uh, uh yep. Yeah. And then of course, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that those are like the most notable new coaches, right? Right. Um, yeah, you're right, bro. When you when you literally when you come out uh, no, nah, I mean, Doug Peters, you know what I'm saying? Like, Jack Jacksonville is pretty much the same team they were last year, to be honest. They ain't, they're not really doing no better than they were. You know, you know, they got a lot of – I think they'll be better down the stretch because Doug is a – he's a veteran um, coach. So, I think they'll be better down the stretch than the other teams will fare, right? We talked about that. Again, there's going to be a change in, in – in, there's going to be a change in the weather here in a little bit. And everybody's going to be like, man, what happened to such and such team? Jacksonville is going to start to pick it up because of the uh, Dougie P. Uh, but other than that, like – they're out there, right? You know what I'm saying? Miami coach. I mean, yeah, he 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 just got a shitload of talent, right? He's he's smart because he go he lets his guys go crazy, right? That's why he's smart. You know what I'm saying? And of course, he's not one of those cats. You know what I'm saying? Going to be like trying to restrict them, but he does he does preach discipline, and and, and you're right, Sean. And I, and I and I didn't mention him, but he does preach discipline, especially offensive discipline, because you don't see them making a lot of mistakes. We need to see Mitch how penalized are the, the Miami Dolphins this year, right? I, I guarantee they're probably, you know what I'm saying, in, in the lower half of teams, you know what I'm saying, that have been penalized because this cat does preach discipline, right? They're not a penalized football team offensively or defensively. So that means that these practices are running smooth. That means that he's holding them accountable. That means, you know what I'm saying, that he's demanding that they do their job and be professional. So, yeah, of course, man, these cats, you know what I'm saying, are coming in and they're saying, you know what, this is how we're going to play. They're understanding their teams, right, first and foremost. They're not coming in with the old just dude. just about to say. Yeah, with yep. the old dude mentality, like, nah, you're going to do it my way. This is how we going to. Nah, 
you have to adapt to these young kids. You know what I'm saying? They punks. I'm just being honest. They punks. They sensitive. You know what I'm saying? Now, you ain't got to kiss their ass, but if you come at them a way that they can understand, they can relate to you, right? And you can associate, you know what I'm saying, some things that you know with the way that they feel and act, you're going to have success. And that's what these young coaches are doing. So shout out to them. Yep. Uh, Mitch says they're, they're ranked uh, 20, 28th. Mitch, is that, is, is, that, is that good that they're ranked 28th or is that bad? In, in, yeah, in, tw- no, in so, yeah, so 20, 28th being yep. there's 32 teams, right? So 28th is great. Well, in, right? terms of where, in terms of where, like, the most of the least. No, number, least? number one will be the most penalized team, right? So right. that's, okay. that's gotcha. probably gotcha. going to be, if I got to guess. You know what? Let's try that. Let's try to guess right now who's the most penalized team. And I'm going to go out and live and say the Ooh. fucking Bears. Wow. Um, I'm. I, don't, I have no clue. I'm gonna say the Broncos. I'm just gonna mm. say the Broncos. I feel. I feel like they're sloppy enough. But Mitch. to your point, real quick, before we move on to to, to a special Mitch segment, um, Nick Sirianni is the best example of this. Where his his, his coaching, one. his coaching matches with his talent. Right where he took his philosophy and he put together the right pieces where they might not have a, a ton of guys necessarily jumping off the page per se, right. but he's making guys into stars. Rams right. are number one, Denver's yeah. 32. Okay. Understand so. this though. like So when you get guys to buy into your system and say, hey, this is where I need you to be. This is what I need you to do. You're going to have great success. Point blank here. Yeah. God willing. All right, Mitch. It's been dubbed Mitch's theory of suckativity. Why teams uh, ha, ha. suck in prime time? We're bringing you on the stream, goddammit. You had, you really put together some stats, so we're gonna let you plead your case about why this year teams have been so mediocre. To, yeah, when they're playing under under the big lights. Let them hear it, Mitch. So the original on the lines of the feeling of NFL this year and how points are down and how they suck. My theory is the primetime games suck, not the normal games. They're scoring at about an average pace. But the difference is in 2021, teams on primetime, which was one less game than we've had this year, teams in primetime scored 941 points through six weeks. 2022, 729 with an extra game, being that Titans, Bills, 730. Doubleheader, yeah. I don't know. But also the big thing is 2021, the point differential was 174 points with 941 scored. Whereas this year, there's 729 points with 189 point differential, which means there's less points scored and they're farther away. The games are more blowouts and somehow not scoring in the first place. Plus, last year, being Cardinals fans that mostly listen to this, I'm sure, the very first game that the Cardinals played, they won 38 to 13. And gave hope to this franchise where now the Cardinals are two and four. So I don't think the season itself sucks for the NFL. I think the fact that the Cardinals are down and primetime sucks because get Denver off my screen. Dang it. Jesus. Get them all away. That whole day. Get all of them away. The most they've scored in four games on primetime is 16 points. That's it. And they did it twice. Let's ride. Let's ride them out of town. God damn it. Yeah, no, I'm done with them. That they're so adding Denver plus the horrible primetime games, plus Denver, plus Cardinals not as good, equals NFL not as much fun this year. Okay. Plus Denver. JB, what, JB Mitch has been in the lab with, with a white coat. He has a, he has a bunch of yeah, he, he has a bunch he's, of had, he's, he's got a smock on, you know what I'm saying? And literally, you know what I'm saying? He's putting, you know what I'm saying, all these... Bunts and beakers, and he's doing and, yeah, I, need you that, know I need the glasses from that Miami coach that we right. were just talking about. Yeah, you about. need those glasses, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? From the kicker we just signed, that's what you need those, you know, those, you know, those, oh, yeah, those, yeah, those oh, I need goggles. That's yeah. what I need. I need those goggles. Yeah, you need your goggles, right? <laughs> yeah. So I agree. You know what I'm saying? I like, like, look, it's hard to disagree with Mitch. You know what I'm saying? I do it sometimes just to fuck with him. But, like, it's hard to disagree with Mitch. You know what I'm saying? Because Mitch does his homework. I'm going to agree wholeheartedly, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, they definitely. So the thing about it is that they drunk the Kool Aid, right? The NFL drunk the Kool Aid. Russ signed with the Broncos. They were like, put this motherfucker on every Thursday night game. We got a way to get this Thursday night games popping. We got a way to get our money back from Prime. We got a way to do all of this shit. It's Russ. And Russ ain't cooking, right? Mm-hmm. Russ out here, you know what I'm saying, burning the whole kitchen down, right? <laughs> it's just bad, man. That's right. It's bad. 
Well, and listen, you can't blame them. I mean, what what would you expect? I mean, they want they want to put their stars on TV, and they're they're just not getting the job done. But I, I'm Mitch. We're with you. Take the Broncos off our goddamn screen. Otherwise, we're gonna fucking binge Netflix or some shit. Cause goddamn NFL, keep our eyes, keep our viewership. We go boycott man. Prime. Yep. And I ain't talking Coach Prime. Go <laughs> boycott Prime. Mm-mm-mm. All right. <laughs>